Time for some facial. When I was teaching in-person classes, I'd often do a yin yang fusion class, which I promised would work the whole body from the top of the head to the tips of the toes, touching areas that we don't always get to work in a more traditional yoga practice. And I get a lot of requests for the face yoga part. So I'm going to spend a few minutes to just walk through how to exercise all the muscles and the tissues in the face. But as we're doing that, we can also work some other parts of the body in a yin and yang way. Well, let's give it a try. I invite you to come into a toe squat. To do that, tuck your toes under and sit on your heels. And tuck the little toes under too, let them join the party. And the feet are meant to be able to do this. You should be able to bend your toes back like this. But if it's just too intense and you really can't stand it, then take some relief, just come onto your knees for a bit. And when the toes say, okay, come on back, and then come on back. <clears throat> If this really is just too much for your toes, though, feel free to just sit on your heels. This can be a nice stress for the knees. Or just sit cross-legged and we'll work the upper body. So toe squat to begin. And while we let the toes marinate in a nice yin stress here, we'll add a little mala of exercise for the shoulders. I first learned about all this from Shiva Ray. Start with your right hand up and draw it across your body. If you bend the elbow, you lose the stress. We're going to feel a nice stress to the outside of the shoulder. Bring the back of the hands together and pull the arm across. Just until you feel something, a nice tugging here. Now we'll add the face yoga. Give us your biggest, stupidest grin. A nice cheesy smile here. So really open up your smile. And don't worry, your face won't stick like this, despite what your mother used to say. And just cheesy grin. There's about 43 muscles in the face. And they all need exercise too, so give it a nice big smile. And when you're smiling like this, the brain doesn't know that you're faking it. And so you're releasing all those endorphins in your face, in your brain. You can't go to your therapist and say, I feel so depressed when you're smiling like this. She just won't believe you. The smile. And slowly relax. We're going to slide the left elbow under the right and come into eagle arms. We bring the palms together. If you can't get the palms together, just, just fake it somehow, or even just do a hug asana, lifting the elbows up. Now, for the face yoga, we're going to come into the screen, like Munch's poster. Open your face as wide as you can. Open your eyes, open your nostrils, just really, and lift the elbows up and away, because eagle arms, they soar. Now, you'll notice nobody can see you. It's like you're screaming in space. Nobody can hear you? Well, here you're hiding behind the elbows. So open your face up as wide as you can. Really get wide there. And then try not to talk while you're doing this. It won't work. So one last little oomph into your face. Have you ever heard that in a yoga class? Put a little oomph into your face. Then slowly shut your face. I mean that nicely. Slowly lower the arms. Bring the back of the hands together. This next part is a little bit tricky. Bring the palms down and palms together. Then bring both arms up and back. Now for the face yoga, make your face as small as you can. Really tiny, tiny face. Like you just tasted the most sour lemon ever. Small faces. That was Rod Stewart's first rock band. Small faces. Tiny faces. Really scrunch it up. Try to swallow your eyebrows. Really tiny. Again, put a little oomph into it. And slowly release. Bend your right arm. Hold the elbow with your left hand and pull both elbows backwards. Now, if you're more flexible and you can grab the hand behind your back, go for that. But if you can't grab, better just to hold the elbow and bring both elbows back. Now, look straight ahead. I'm not going to turn the head. Turning the head is called cheating. But looking straight ahead now, just slide your face to the right. Sorry, to the left. Everyone, look to the left. Your eyes move, your nose moves, but don't turn your head. You even feel like your right ear is sliding to the left. You feel a bit like Popeye, the great American Zen master. Popeye, remember Popeye? He once said, I am what I am. That's brilliant. That's deep. You can feel a nice little stretch on the right side of your face. 
and I'm looking to the front. We're going to interlock the fingers, turn the palms away. We're going to do Shambhasana, the lion. We're going to stick our tongue out, touch the chin, and look up. At the same time, we're going to breathe out. You can add the roar if you want. I think if I roar here, I might blow the mic. So we'll just take a nice deep inhale. Ah. I actually couldn't hear you doing that. So let's try that again. Loud enough so that I can hear you. I know you can hear me. So one more time. Deep inhale. Look up. Ah. Ah. Okay, close enough. And now, a nice massage. Massaging all the follicles at the base of the head here and the hair. Uh, the side, the back. All tissues need energy and you can start to build blood flow. It's very healthy for the hair and I wish somebody had told me this like 20 years ago. Adding the face yoga, massaging. And by now, your toes are probably saying, hey, remember us? So enjoy this part. You've worked for it. You've earned it. Lean forward just a little bit until you can release the toes, point the toes backwards, and sit back in your heels and go, ah. On yoga we say, Om Namah Shivaya, which first we translate as, thank you, Jesus. Now this is going to be the ankle stretch. So if you can, lean back a little bit. And for track one, this might be enough. If this is juicy enough, just stay here. If this is too much for your knees, just sit cross-legged or just have your legs out in front of you. Track two, a little bit more challenge, lift the knees up. When I first started to do this practice, I couldn't get my knees off the ground at all. Track three, hold the knees. You're pulling the knees up, so you're getting nice stress to the top of the ankles. Nice plantar flexion here. And we let this soak in, we're going to add some eye yoga. Bring your right hand up, thumb pointing to the side. Start by looking off to infinity. And as you inhale, look at one part of your thumb and slowly bring it towards the tip of the nose. So you get nicely cross-eyed. Now as you exhale, keep looking at the tip of the thumb. Let the arm reach out. At the end of the exhale, look off to infinity. Repeat that six to eight times. Inhale, drawing in. As you exhale, move the hand away. As you repeat this, you might notice there's a little bit of an achiness happening right between the eyes in that lower eyebrow area there. That's good. There's little muscles that help to bend the lens of the eye. And those muscles start to get a little bit weaker as we get older. So as we age, the lens of the eye starts to get a little bit stiff, a little bit yellow. And that yellowing, that's why we crave more light as we get older. We need a little bit more light. It's harder to see in the darkness. But the stiffening of the lens also makes it harder to focus. So at some point in your mid-40s, your optometrist will say, ah, presbyopia, that's elder's eyes. Pretty soon you're going to need readers because it's getting harder and harder to focus the lens. I was told that in my late 40s, and then that's when I discovered eye yoga. And after doing this for a few months, I found I didn't need readers anymore. And I'm in my 60s now, and I don't need reading glasses. Now at the end, Cover your eyes. Keep the eyes open, but cover them. If your knees are up, lower them to the ground. Two dark caves here. Palming the eyes can also be very healing for the eyes. And building some heat, but also some darkness so the eyes can relax. Helping to build, build blood flow here. It would be great if you could do this for a couple of minutes, several times a day. But for now, close your eyes. Lower your hands. And we're going to step back to a plank pose on elbows. So just step one foot at a time back. And that should be very nice for your feet. You're pulling the heels away, pushing the top of the head away. For track one students who can't hold the plank, it's okay to lower the knees to the floor. But try not to side the hips. You're pushing the top of the head forward. You're pulling the heels backwards. Your gaze is soft. Either between the hands, your hands can be flat on the floor. We can have a fist here. One more breath here. And then lower your knees and hips into a little sphinx pose. Relax here for a moment.
and sit back in child's pose. In child's pose, we rise up again, sitting on the heels. We're ready for part two, the other half of the practice. <coughs> so for the second side, again we're going to start with the toe squat. You thought we were finished? No, no, no. Your toes will be happy about this. Check in with them in the morning. They'll feel great. It's like, you know, we mistreat our toes. It's all day long. We're enclosing our toes in dead animal skins. And, and we wonder when we get to our 60s and 70s why our feet don't work. It's because you're imprisoning the toes. You want to let them breathe and move. So this will be great. For Again, tuck the little toe under as well. Let it join the party. Again, if this is too much, just come onto your knees. And then you can stand it again. Sit back on your heels. And if this is getting too much, build up this flexibility, this range of motion over time. Don't be in a hurry to get it all at once. If it's too much, just sit cross like Now for the shoulder mala, the left hand is out and across. Bring the back of the hands together. So you feel a nice tugging on the outside of the left shoulder there. And then again for our face shoulder, let's add the grin. But this time, see if you can add the sparkle, the little twinkle in your eye. It can, computers can tell when you're faking a grin or a smile. Because most people, they only smile with their face, or their jaw rather, the mouth. And you need to add the eyes. Computers can tell if you're not smiling with your eyes, you're faking it. So you can't go up to the Mr. Customs man when you're flying from Canada to the US and say, yes, Mr. Customs man, I have nothing to declare. Not if you're twinkling with the eye. I'm just bringing back yoga into the country. So again, one last little oomph into this. And releasing for the ego arms, slide the right elbow up into the left. Palms together if you can, or just fake it somehow, or do the hug asana. It's always nice to find a nice quiet corner and pull yourself together when you're having a bad day. Now, eagle sword, let the elbows up and away, and add the screen. Open your face as wide as you can. Open your eyes, open your mouth, open your nostrils. Let everything open as wide as you can. And you can feel that lovely stress in your facial muscles. And that's stimulating blood flow and also stimulating the cells at a deep level. You're stimulating the fibroblasts that build more collagen and produce the moisture-loving molecules, the hyaluronic acid. So put a little oomph in your screen and then slowly shut your face, close your mouth, bring the back of the hands together, palms turned down, palms together, and then bring both arms up and back, and now we're going to add the small face, the tiny face. Try to swallow your eyebrows again. Tiny, tiny face. If you can't swallow your eyebrows, at least swallow your nose or your upper lip. Really, really tiny. And you can't see me. I can't see you. That's okay. We're just doing this on our own. Sour. One last little oomph. And slowly release. Bend the left elbow. Hold it with the right hand and pull both elbows back. Or if you can, you can clasp behind your back, go for that. Or if you've got a strap or a ponytail to hold on to. If not, just hold. Now looking straight ahead, we're going to slide the face to the left. Sorry, to the right. But we're not going to turn that. So again, that's cheating. So just slide your face. Look to the right. Feel that lovely stretch on the left side of your face. Try not to talk here. as much of a stretch as you can. You're looking, your nose is going. You can even feel your left ear suddenly coming around to the middle of your face. A bit like a Picasso painting. Think cubist. Do one last one. Release. Interlock the fingers, turn the palms away. Lion part two, Shambhasana. Stick your tongue out, touch your chin, look up. Inhale. Uh, Okay, now raindrops. 
drops are falling on my head. Right now where I'm recording, it's very rainy. I don't know if you can hear it through my AirPods. But it's a B.J. Thomas song. Rain drops are falling on my head. Just keep massaging, tapping, bringing blood flow all around the head. And you can massage it in, massage the face. Hopefully you won't dislodge the AirPods this time. Again, your toes are talking to you, but now they're saying, hey, 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 remember us? Okay, so again, savor this. You've earned it. You've worked up towards it. Enjoy this feeling. This is why people come back to your yoga, because it feels so good to come out of the poses. It's like if you've been hitting your head against a wall all day long and you stop finally, it feels so nice to stop. So savor this. Lean forward. Point the toes away. Sit back on the heels and own Namah Shivaya. Track one, you can just stay here. Track two, a little bit more challenging, lean back, lift the knees up. Track three, see if you can hold the knees and pull them up. And we do this little ankle stretch here. We can do the eye yoga part two, this time the left hand up, thumb to the side. Look off to infinity. As you inhale, look at one part of your, note, of your thumb, and this time bring it between the eyebrows. You'll feel nicely cross-eyed as you exhale. Let the hand move back away. Repeat that 16 times. Now you can do this during a yoga practice while you're sitting, or you can also do it in the morning. The way I did my eye yoga was to, every morning when I was eating my oatmeal, I'd bring my spoon towards my nose, and then I'd make a detour into the mouth. Then as I moved the hand away, I'd turn the spoon over and read that fine printing at the back. It usually says Korea 18 slash 10 or something like that. So as you bring it in, you'll feel that achiness. That means your eye muscles are working. Keep those muscles strong. <clears throat> now, if you're already using reading glasses, it depends on your prescription. If it's like 1, 1.5, you might be able to strengthen your eyes enough that you won't need the reading glasses anymore. But if you're up around 3 or 4, then you're probably not going to recover, recover that much vision. You may need lesser readers, but the best to start this when you're younger. As soon as you start to hit your 40s, start to work on strength in the eyes. And interestingly, this will also help your vision far away. So it turns out you can actually study for an eye test. When you go to get your driver's license renewed, you have to read that chart. You can either memorize the chart, and that's called cheating, or you can do this in the parking lot for a few minutes. Just strengthen your eyes and then go in and you'll ace it. Now cover your eyes with the palms. Make two dark caves there. Keep the eyes open. You can lower your knees to the ground. The eyes are open. They're relaxing now in the darkness. And the heat of the hands helps to bring blood flow to the ocular regions, the eyes. Again, it'd be great to stay here for a couple of minutes. But we don't have that much time today, so before you move your hands away, close your eyes. Lower your knees if they aren't, and then place your elbows, your forearms under the ground. Step back to the plank pose, sometimes called staff pose or crocodile. Your gaze is soft on the floor. Again, the palms can be flat or hands interlocked. Pull the heels backwards, push the top head forward. Over time, you can work to stay here for a one to one and a half minutes. Slowly lower the knees and hips, finishing sphinx pose for a moment. And then heading back to child's pose. You can maybe do child's pose with the hands out in front of you, the palms turned up. Might be a different way of doing child pose for you. Hands face up may take some stress out of the shoulders. Leave you there as long as you like. When you're ready, you can roll up to sitting. Normally when I do the space yoga and the toe squat in a class, I would finish with this and then we head right to Shavasana. You could start your class this way if you like, but it might be a bit intense for your toes as well. So thanks for sharing your face with us. Enjoy the rest of your day.